Good day, this is Brad Caleb, PhD. And my PhD stands for Post Hole Digger. You wonder what does that mean? Reality is that for some strange reason, we keep on working on disasters, preparing for the wrong disasters, restorative justice number 40. Why is this an oxymoron? Well, for some reason, when we work at a foundation and the foundation is somewhere somehow not exactly right, we will find over time that when we look at the building or whatever is built on top of our foundation, that something is amiss. If we look at the building and it's going left, more left, more to the left, then it looks like the Eiffel Tower and eventually it will collapse. The same with our spiritual aspect. When we look at the body of Christ as it is acting and perfecting itself during this time of major disasters. Natural disasters defined by the World Health Organization as an act of nature of such magnitude as to create a catastrophe, a catastrophic situation. And some of the most common natural disasters are hurricanes, earthquakes, floods and tsunamis. In the 20th century, from 1900 to 2000 to 2020 actually, catastrophic events take place, some of which are the deadliest natural disasters of all times. So far, 2020 was a standout year for all the wrong reasons, including its devastating natural disaster, wildfires ravaged the western US and tropical cyclones have popped up left and right with several causing significant damage to coastal areas. The latest storm, Hurricane Delta, is good for the Gulf Coast and the president refuses to concede among wildfires, rain and flooding like a little child sucking his thumb because he lost his presidency while 3,000 people plus are dying. He couldn't care less. Now I mentioned already to some of you or to the people that have been watching my videos that there are things that don't make sense. One of the issues that I have seen in my life is a major issue, the question why, W-H-Y. Why are things happening that we have no control over? I understand that our belief system is a very important aspect in life. I discovered, and when I say discovered, I had 70 years to do that. The first 60 years, I have done everything that I could do. I was raised a Christian, born actually Christian, got a slap on the bum and I was a Roman Catholic. As my mom passed away at age six, when I was six years of age, I ended up in an orphanage, seven years. And then coming back home because my father remarried, it didn't sit well and eventually I ended up on the street, not that long after. And so from the street going to Wall Street was a tremendous jump. It took a while, but during that jump, I always wondered what is the reason, why? And so you go back to historic points. Why are we seeing all those tremendous uh, disasters, natural disasters. Now we can have tremendous statements of the World Health De Organization that will say, okay, this is what a natural disaster is. 
But are we working on the wrong disasters? What I mean to say, folks, is are we focusing on the wrong issue? Yes, today we're talking December 2020. There are millions of people facing the pandemic. Thousands of people are dying on a daily basis in the United States, between two and a half and three thousand people. And the president is not doing anything else but suing all kinds of people because they didn't live up to this. So he couldn't care less about the people dying. So the question is, what can we do about this? If the president has this kind of attitude and he gets 71 million people behind him in the United States, that tells me that almost half of the Americans are feeling the same way. Now the question is, is that true? Let's find out. <laughs> I mentioned before that I wrote a book and it's called the Deception Protocol for the Prodigal Son Blueprint. I discovered at one time that I was a prodigal son. And looking at it from that perspective, I'd gone through a lot of money. And when I say a lot of money in defense, talking $10 million because I had said no to a friend of mine. He was the head of the Freemasons. I should have known better. But at that time, I did not pay attention. When I say not paying attention was I did not really study the subject. I was pretty outspoken about a lot of things, but Freemasons to me, he was a friend. We knew each other for 10 years. During that time that he opposed me because my business was doing well and the collateral was in the billions, he wanted his share. And when I said no to a multimillionaire, I did not realize that I had just touched the secret of the natural disasters. Can you see what I'm referring to? PMS. Satan or Beelzebub controls people through politics, through money and spirituality or religion. Now, the book that I wrote is called PMS. But then, from a practical point of view, I always wonder, is that really all there is to move people? And then I kept on working on the other aspect. What is the religious side? What are they trying to do? And so, from a practical point of view, religion has a belief system. But so has politics. Politics has a belief system. Originally, the belief system was to make sure that all the people were treated equally. And if you were black, you were a slave. And if you were a different color, you became a slave. Till finally that got resolved a little bit. And now we have a president-elect that for the first time is not afraid from women or is not afraid from people with a different color because they are in his cabinet, at least proposed. And so... Things are finally changing. After 300 years in the United States, we are seeing a change. Now, we have seen those changes in Europe way faster and in Australia and England. But the reality is, did we as mankind, as humanity, did we change? See, most religions consider certain doctrines essential to their belief system. And they make it that you have to have three basics. And if you believe those, and if you confess those, you belong to the party. If you do not confess them, then you will be excommunicated. And guess what? I had the wonderful experience of being excommunicated three times. Have I become an expert in it? No. I ask only the question, why? Why is this? And so let's ask ourselves today, why are we facing a pandemic? Why is the church 
or the body of Christ, the majority in the United States, out of 203 million believers, and there are a total of about 320 Americans, 20 million Americans, that means that we are talking a fair chunk of people that are attending one way or another a church. And yet half of that is vying for Trump, a man that has no beliefs other than himself. Now, if we let something simmer too long, it will boil over. And snuffing out your pilot light, I don't know if you cook, I like cooking and I cook most of the time. Uh, my kids also cook, but they live in Canada, so I have to do it at the moment here in Holland. And as I cook, I've noticed that when I turn on the gas and I let something simmer too long, eventually it either boils over or it will burn. And sniffing out the or snuffing out the pilot light. A pilot light is supposed to be there to give you at all time electricity. Uh oh, is that true? No, it is supposed to give you energy. Because if it is an electrical stove and I'm working on a gas stove, I need somewhere a spark in order to get the gas to move. And that is the same as us. What is sparking you? What is sparking me? And so now as Burr Caleb, PhD, I do my small part in carrying out the Great Commission, teaching them to observe all things the Lord commanded us. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Be ye imitators of Elohim, Elohim, our Father. Now we talked about the morals, we talked about the ethics and the values of the Christian faith before. But to recoup, if you do not believe the three essentials, the one central is Trinity. It's God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Ghost. That's at least what they're standing. And then there's the atonement work of Christ on the cross and salvation by grace through faith. So these are doctrines that comprise the Christian faith the essence of it. To remove any one of them makes the belief system non-Christian and therefore you will not be promoted as a believer. Now asking ourselves, so what is the basic belief of the Creator? Because God Almighty created us, He gave Adam and Eve, because if you compare the many different religions, they all say the same. There was a man and a woman. Somewhere they started in a paradise or in a big garden and you can look up every religion but they all have something similar. So we go out from the hypothesis that this is where it started. Just to have a baseline. If you disagree with me, that is fine. Let me know. But the reality is when the Father gave us a garden, He gave us everything that we needed to live. We had water, we had fruit, we had trees, we had everything we could live off. And so God says, don't touch this tree of life. Hmm. And why not? Well, the question didn't come up. But the question came from a whole different source. Beelzebub, in the form of a snake, talking to the woman because Adam was busy being an apprentice with God. Adam was created according to the image of God. And the beauty of being an image of God, if you are close, buddy, buddy, he's going to teach you also how to act, how to be like God Almighty. God was eternal. So Adam was learning how to communicate, how to verbalize himself, how to take care of the garden. And in the process, he also learned some secrets. God was going to teach him how to live eternal because we were created to be eternal. And so therefore, living forever 
was for some people, and today particularly, for some people is the ultimate. But they have one little problem. They also need to have all the money in the world because otherwise they're not happy. And so there is a discrepancy. We have the politics, we have the money, and we have the spirituality. And today we're dealing mostly with spirituality. What is it? Why are we as people that believe facing all those disasters? So what is the basic belief of the Creator? Summarizing the Christian core principles is simple. I gave you already an underline what it is, but the most important part is what established was established by the Father. For example, when King Saul got into serious trouble as the first king of Israel, he knew that he needed to hear from the Lord. And so he went to the man of God, Samuel, but he couldn't find him. And it took a while. And Samuel came when Saul had done something. King Saul had done something very stupid. There was a law set by God Almighty, how he was supposed to treat the sacrifices that he was submitting to God. But he didn't do it the way God wanted him to do it. And therefore he lost everything. And King David became the king, the favorite king of Israel. And that made me think, what was that rule? The same rule was issued to Adam and Eve. They said, do not touch that. What's one simple thing? And Satan said, Beelzebub says, are you sure? Psst, psst. Is that really what he means? Psst. And then eventually a man was found, Moses. He was going to set the people free. And they had to gather around a mountain, Mount Sinai. And when they came there, the mountain started to rumble and God said, Moses, come up here. And the Lord called unto Moses out of the mountain saying, come unto me for I would give thee the law for thy people, which shall be a covenant for the children of light. Uh-oh, we have a little problem. The children of light. And this is something that I learned from a fellow that in 1928, Mr. Edmund Bordeaux Sikalski first published his translation of the book of the Essene Gospel of Peace, an ancient manuscript he had found in the sacred archives in the Vatican as the result of limitless patience, faultless scholarship. And he translated the book out of the Aramaic language, one of the languages that very few people speak. And the discovery of this Gospel of Peace, the English translation, when it appeared in 1937, really got an interest. To me, I didn't know about it, and for some reason I ran into it. I found out what we are supposed to do. Folks, would you be interested in finding out how you can face your pandemics, your troubles, and your problems? See, when the Lord wanted to give a covenant to the children of the light, those were not the Jewish people, those were the people, the children of light. But when they failed to ratify the covenant because Moses came down from the mountain after 40 days and he saw a group of people dancing and living like animals, he got so fat up he just threw the stone tablets and they were totally demolished. And he went back to God and God said, okay, I understand. I will give them the Ten Commandments. And what those commitments are after studying and after a life of seven decades now, I had some very intriguing interaction with the law. I have studied law, insurance law, I was pretty good at it, and, and 
also international law when you do certain things internationally. But when I was forced to learn the criminal law, I was not really pleased. It took us everything. It cost us everything. When I say us as a family, over $10 million in legal fees, and then they kept on pushing and pushing and pushing because they were determined, my friend with his Freemason group, determined they will punish me for not sharing their money, which is not even their money. But the reality was I lost everything. And in the process, I became familiar with the law because the one most important part was I won on appeal. Now, an appeal is something I don't want to go into, but it is a part of the law if the judge was wrong in his judgment and pushed certain things the wrong way. And that opened my eyes because the same with us mankind. There were certain laws issued, but what were those laws? They were a covenant, and a covenant is something that you agree, party A and party B agrees and they ratify it, and they both say, yes, I will. So when God gave his covenant for the children of light, he gave them everything they needed in order to be part of the body of Christ, the true Christ. What am I talking about? See, Christianity, the body of Christ, has made some changes like the Jewish people did as well. The fact that they say, well, it was first the Jews and now the Christians. And if you talk to a Muslim, they said it was first the Jews, then the Christians, and now it's us. Both of them are right and both of them are wrong. When I say wrong, I mean in the approach. The Jewish people were the prodigal son they got the law, they got the Ten Commandments and many more laws, and they are fantastic how they can memorize better than anybody else. Jews have a specific talent for the law, and it's incredible. I've learned an awful lot from Jewish people, Jewish bankers, but they failed to do something because when Yeshua came and met with the Pharisees, he said, you are from the synagogue of Satan. And I, today, in 2020, have come to the same conclusion, that the church, the body of Christ, are from the synagogue of Satan. And I don't say that easy. I was very upset when I discovered, having trained in theology, having gone through the Bible schools and paid my dues and everything to discover that I was part of the synagogue of Satan. And the children of light are the ones that are following Jesua HaMashiach. That is the name of the Redeemer, not Jesus. But if you want to call him Jesus, because that's the way you know him, it's up to God how he responds to a nickname. So talking now about the true law, the law between the a gov government, between the children of light and God the Father, that part had been disrupted with Adam and Eve, could not be completed by the Jewish people because they were too hard-headed. And then when Moses came down with the second part, the Ten Commandments, they were the Ten Commandments that showed that each time if you violated those, you were indebted to Satan. But the covenant of the children of light are a different part. Because if you follow the way, the truth, and the light, you become a child of the light. And that is what the Lord is looking for. I've shared in different videos, over different videos already, how we come to the children of light. And the Lord said, I would give thee the law for thy people, which shall be a covenant for the children of light. So when we did not sign that petition to become a child of the light, and we wished fully 
followed whatever was available, did we ever check out where the evidence was? You see, in court I learned that evidence is extremely important. It doesn't matter if the judge is against you or for you. If there is a fact in life and you can prove that the evidence says this is wrong, then you will either win now or you win on appeal. And I want to show you that you can face your pandemic, face any problem with the right evidence. And the evidence leads us to Yeshua HaMashiach because he said, I leave you the way, the truth and the light. And God confirmed it. We have Josephus Flavius. We have Plinus. We have other historians that lived around that time of Jesus. And they were encouraged to write down what happened as historians. So they confirmed that Jesus was alive. They confirmed that Jesus got nailed on the cross or crucified. Some people say he got nails and other people say he got tied up, whatever, but he got killed. And he rose up from the death. And there was a tremendous revival for many, many centuries. As a matter of fact, for 325 years. And at that time, somebody was fed up with it. And that was Beelzebub. So he got the emperor of Rome to make a demand, a decree. And his decree was, if you do not become a Christian. So now the question is, why does the emperor of Rome have to threaten us to become Christians and then change his everything that Yeshua has taught his disciples of light? Now, if you cannot answer the question, I would urge you to really check it out. Because if you have been started off as a follower of the way and you became a Christian like I did, my eyes opened during 12 years in court. Yes, folks, I'm a slow learner because I didn't believe that my teachers, my professors, my pastors had lied to me. But if you lie because you don't know better, you're still lying. So when I got the evidence in my hand that it was the emperor of Rome that demanded if you do not become a Christian today, you will be thrown in the arena. And then when I checked out that Serapis was a god of the underworld about a couple of hundred years before Jesus was born, and those people that followed Serapis were called Christians, because they were following Serapis, a deity, a god of stone. That really got me thinking. If I have evidence that God is God Almighty, He loves us, He gives us a law, He gives us a covenant, which is the covenant then? Is it what the priest says, or what the Pope says, or what the body of Christ says? Or is it what God says? And he said he gave the covenant for the children of light. And if I do not follow the path, the way, the truth and the light, what am I following? And so for myself, I refuse to be called a Christian because I am a follower of Yeshua HaMashiach. And yes, folks, the Ten Commandments have now become my guideline because that is what we are supposed to do. If I am indebted to Satan when I fail the Ten Commandments, he has a hold of me. But when I refuse the hold of Satan on me and I repent and I become and I'm set free now, you can do the same. I'm not saying what you need to do, but I strongly suggest check out the evidence that you have in your hands. If you are not a covenant child of God, in other words, if you are not one of the children of the light that has a covenant with God Almighty and start understanding that the Ten Commandments are not disasters, ten disasters that we're seeing, but it causes all the disasters because you are not following the way, the truth and the light. If we fail to see the light 
and we are constantly moving in darkness. Isn't it time that we turn on the light? Because the light is living within you. It might be a very tiny light. It might be on pilot light, as I mentioned before. You know, it's simmering. But don't let it simmer too long because it might boil over, snuffing out your pilot light. And then you have nothing left. So please, check out. Are you in covenant with God Almighty as a child of the light? Not as a Christian. Because a Christian is a follower of a couple of weird laws that has nothing to do with God Almighty. Now remember, tough times never last. But tough people, they do. And you will find out because the beauty of it is when you seek the presence of the Lord, seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. He will guide you. He will direct you. But God himself will give you wisdom and understanding no matter what you studied as long as you stick with God Almighty. He will direct you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness and all those other things shall be added unto you. Tough times never last. But tough people, they do. God bless you folks.